Here's what's coming up on your horizon. Well, during this week of Veterans Day, our focus is on what has become our nation's longest war and the young men and women who fight it. We'll look at the work underway to help veterans in their fight for a job upon their return home. Oklahoma's award-winning war correspondent Mike Betcher takes us inside the life and death decisions soldiers and Marines often face in a gripping feature film called The Hornet's Nest. And we end our day with the story of an Oklahoman who's turned a round of golf into a way to help families of those who have sacrificed so much. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education. Oklahoma's investment in career tech provides more than nationally recognized technology education and training. It produces solid financial returns for the state's economic future. Oklahoma Career Tech, elevating our economy. And the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping good people grow good things. And now, from the Career Tech Studios in Stillwater, here's your host, Rob McClendon. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. Well, America's military is expected to discharge up to one million service members over the next several years. And many of these young men and women are heading back to school in hopes of gaining the skills for their final fight of getting a job. Joining me now from the campus of Oklahoma State University is our Courtney May. Rob, just imagine you are an older returning veteran on a college campus surrounded by younger students whose biggest worry so far in life has been, did they turn in their last homework assignment or when is the next party? And it's that dynamic that many returning soldiers face when returning to a college campus and also have been witness to things on the battlefield that their fellow students would never understand. Moving from the life and death decisions on the battlefield to the peacefulness of a college campus can be a difficult transition for returning student and veteran Ryan Maley. In the military you are trained to kill. I mean you're, you're as we say at our unit you're trained to kill and break stuff you know and, and that's true. Uh, we come back and we have to transition into this civilian population. We have to be functioning members of society. Maley is a veteran benefit specialist at Oklahoma State University and helps other veterans go from soldier to student. They've definitely helped my transition from going from an Air Force member to a student. Andrew Schofield is a senior majoring in natural resource ecology and says bonds that he has formed with other veteran students is rewarding. Yeah, it's, it's one of the things I, I like to do the most because, you know, it, it keeps me the, the connection that I, I kind of desire to have. And I was in those shoes too, so it really makes me, uh, you know, it's fulfilling to me. And while the transition can be difficult, veteran and student Josh Baker says OSU makes it easier because they are surrounded by people who know what they are going through. I think a lot of veterans will appreciate having someone that's familiar with you know, what they've been dealing with for the last four or eight or however many years they were in the service and being able to help, you know, help them navigate the system to get everything that they've earned to their service. Lieutenant Governor Todd Lamb. Time and time again, Oklahoma soldiers have answered the call. National Guard, Air Force, Marines, Army, et cetera, et cetera, the Navy have answered the call. Paula Barnes has worked with OSU Veteran Services for 30 years and she says it's because she loves serving the people who have given her our country. I love seeing students um, complete their goals and their dreams and I particularly love to see it with our with our nation's veterans. They mean a lot to me. They've, they've given so much and to be able to be a part of that life for them to help them get where they need to be and, and, and to continue on with the things having served our country. Uh, that's that's why, why I do what I do. And student veteran Billy Kingfisher says Barnes's work ethic and desire to help veteran students is greatly appreciated. I benefit a lot from veteran services. Um, Part of it was uh, I only had one classmate who was a veteran over my program, so being able to kind of shoot the breeze with these guys and kind of learn from their experiences and so forth. We will be their champion. We will fight for them and, and the things that they need, and we have done that in the past, and we will continue to do that. 
Now, Courtney, the GI Bill has long helped veterans make the transition from soldier to student without the burden of worrying about their finances, helping pay for not only an education, but providing access to low interest loans to buy a house or even monthly housing allowances. So Courtney, my question is this, what qualifications do these veterans that you met have to meet to receive the benefits? Well, if you have at least 90 days of active duty service after September 10th, 2001, or are currently on active duty, or you are an honorably discharged veteran, then you may be eligible for these Veterans Affairs Administered Program. All right, thank you so much, Courtney. You're welcome, Rob. Now, many of our returning veterans have families and responsibilities that makes getting a four or five year degree extremely difficult. When we return, we look at how some veterans are fast tracking their way back into the workforce. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon, featuring some of the good things that are happening in the great state of Oklahoma. Well, a military homecoming is certainly a welcoming event. However, the joblessness that can soon occur afterwards isn't. That's why Francis Tuttle Technology Center is cooking up a recipe to put returning soldiers in a new career, both quickly and inexpensively. From flying up above to chopping down below. For John Aquino, the culinary arts program at Francis Tuttle is offering him a new career and a new life. I used to fly on the AWACS. Um, as a communications technician. But when he left the service in 2011, Aquino decided to follow his passion, a passion for food. I started cooking when I was about 13 years old. Both my parents worked, and if we wanted to eat, we had to cook something delicious. So, well, it, was, it didn't start delicious. But delicious came later. What was it? That's delicious. And culinary arts instructor Andrew Laughlin says Aquino isn't the only vet turned chef who has returned home. I was in the United States Army, um, an infantryman, uh, done a couple of deployments, Kosovo, uh, did a deployment in Iraq. And after an honorable medical discharge, Laughlin returned to his home away from home, the kitchen. Cooking's always been my first choice. And because I was medically discharged, I had to have an action plan to fall back on. Uh, fortunately for me, I had cooking that I always knew in the back of my mind would be something I'd come back to. Currently, the U.S. Army has 520,000 men and women in active duty. Yet, budget proposals would cut that number to 440,000. And according to the Pentagon, as many as 80,000 will be leaving the military in the coming year, looking for work. Gloves on. The military is going through uh, force shaping and uh, letting people go. And most, most people, when you're in the military, you don't have time to plan ahead. So to be able to come out of the military from one career and to move into another one seamlessly is, it's so important. Which is why the culinary arts program at Francis Tuttle is seeing a growing number of returning veterans signing up for classes, preparing for life after military service. I think students are better off coming through career tech because now you have the best of both worlds instead of just college prep. you got college prep, career prep, combine the two, and it's up to you what you do after that. Helping people like Aquino turn military precision into a civilian career. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the culinary arts program at Francis Tuttle in Oklahoma City, just head to our website at okhorizon.com and look for the links under this story. Still to come on Oklahoma Horizon, honoring those who have sacrificed by serving the families they leave behind. But first, an Oklahoman on the front line of history. Well, the United States is in its 13th year of war in Afghanistan, and the stakes have never been higher for our servicemen and women. Yet the conflict seldom gets much attention outside those that serve and their friends and families. But a new film by a longtime war correspondent from Oklahoma could change that. Joining me now is our Andy Barth. Well, Rob, war is a distant issue for most of us, catching only an occasional glimpse of on the evening news. Yet for one journalist, that wasn't enough. In his movie, The Hornet's Nest, reporter Mike Betcher takes us onto the battlefield with the men and women who fight to keep our country safe. It's the glamour of Hollywood with the grit of war. We have 
Journalist Mike Fetcher has spent three decades covering wars and terrorist groups. This mission was met. As the chief correspondent for ABC's Terrorism Investigation Unit, Fetcher embeds with military divisions and documents the reality of war. In 2012, Fetcher embedded with the 101st Airborne in Afghanistan and went to the heart of the Taliban's most hostile valleys. Over the next nine days, U.S. troops fought the Taliban and lost six soldiers. Fetcher captured the struggles, victories, and heartbreak of war and compiled it all into a movie which made its world premiere in Betcher's hometown, Ponca City. I grew up here. Ponca City's my home, and I promised Ponca City when I was finished with this film, we would do it here first. A real-life account of the deadly struggles of war Scott Morgan saw firsthand. If I'd have written out exactly how I would want a story to be told, it wouldn't have been this good. Morgan is a staff sergeant in the platoon Betcher embedded in and says he tells the story of war just as it happens. It was really nice to have somebody like Mike who is just a 100% genuine person. He's not looking to make a story, he's just looking to tell the story that's there. And for the film's director, Christian Turode, highlighting the heroism of those in combat was key. One six, Romeo. We wanted to do this when we saw the footage and we realized what heroes these men and women are, are and were. This film is non-political. This is an immersive narrative film made with real footage. David Salzberg is the co-director of The Hornet's Nest and says the film is not based on a true story. It is the true story, just as it happened. If you do this long enough, sometime you're going to find a story that's way more important than the film. This one's it for me. An intimate behind-the-scenes look at the lives of those fighting the nation's longest war. We're hearing from other people who lost their sons or lost their husbands. The movie allows them to have closure. It shows what they were doing and what their purpose was for this mission. And for those who fought through it all and made it home. It's amazing and so appreciative because I think people are going to see this and have a better understanding of what soldiers go through, what our families go through. Um, it's, it's amazing. You can keep up with us throughout the week. Just head to OKRising.com where you can see more of any of our stories, read our reporters' behind-the-scenes blogs, see what others are saying about us on Twitter, and face the facts with our regular updates. So reach out and touch us anywhere and anytime. Well, Mike Betcher is the last of a dying breed, a war correspondent who lives and works from some of the most dangerous hot spots in the world. During his 34-year career, he's been beaten, shot, kidnapped, even survived a suicide bombing while burying friends and witnessing unspeakable atrocities. Yet he's always gone back to tell the story of the young men and women fighting in our name. I was able to visit with the veteran war correspondent in the balcony lobby of the Ponkin Theater where the Hornet's Nest premiered. Give us some insight into the young men that you were over there with. The most amazing young men and women I've, I've ever been around. You know, they volunteer. They raise their hand and say, I will go out there and so you can sleep tonight. And they are smart. They are committed. They love their country. They follow our orders. We're the ones who send them there. And that's why we made this film, uh, in their honor. Hey, Roger. Yeah, we're in route at this time. The American convoy is traveling this direction. The other way, civilian vehicles. They slowed down when the convoy passed. So did a suicide bomber, and inside his car, he had 600 pounds of high explosives.
Private Richter, how long you been in the Army? Uh, exactly a year, sir. That was the first actual uh, trauma casualty I'd in my care, sir. Did make you mad? <laughs> Most definitely. They were just on the side of the road, just playing, and uh, it didn't need to happen. Look, this is the problem I think we have. 99% of the country does not feel the pain of war. Less than 1% does, and it's those young men and women in uniform we send over there. So we wanted to connect that 99% of the country with that 1%, because if they become separated, we lose touch with them. It's dangerous for our democracy. Yeah, and, and as a society, I, we really do have a disconnect from those who not only serve, but maybe those who serve in return. Absolutely. And, and the real war is starting now, as they come home. There's a new battle on home. So as these soldiers come back and reintegrate, some are doing just fine. But we've got to help with education, jobs, put them at the top of the list for everything. Because they, they said, I pledge allegiance to the flag and to protect the freedoms that have been fought for by generations before them. So if you're a businessman out there hiring, you should be you know, looking first on your list, looking for veterans. Mm -hmm. um, but there are others who, who've come back with, with visible wounds and wounds um, uh, that are invisible, post-traumatic stress disorder. You, know, you see in the film why that could happen. Uh, and so, that's why, you know, that's why we made this film, you know, to, so, so people would recognize the sacrifice and now that they're home say, we want to help you. Final question, what are your hopes and dreams for this film? I'd like every American to see it. I, uh, we need to make that connection, the 99% that doesn't feel the pain of war with the 1% that does. If every American sees this film, this is my dream, that when you see a serviceman or woman in an airport, and as Americans do now, which is great, they say thank you for your service. The next time, after you see this film, when you say thank you, you'll know exactly what you're thanking them for. And when you see this film, you won't just thank them. You'll give them a hug. Well, Mike Betcher, congratulations on a great piece of work. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to see my full interview with this veteran war correspondent, just head to our website at okhorizon.com where we have it streamed. Well, despite their servers, the unemployment rate of military veterans still exceeds that of the general population. That's why an initiative called the Oklahoma Military Connection is helping link companies to veterans looking for work. This kind of event brings those people who really are dedicated to hiring veterans and the veterans who need a job. Some of them uh, have tremendous skills that are really needed to keep the business and, and enterprise of Oklahoma running. Before each hiring event, registered veterans will receive a list of companies hiring in their preferred fields, as well as resume preparation and interviewing tips. Now, to learn more about their next hiring event, just go to okmilitaryconnection.com, which we do have a link to on our website. Want to share something you've seen here today? Well, all of our episodes are streaming on our YouTube channel at Oklahoma Horizon TV. Or you can subscribe to our weekly free podcast on iTunes. Well, over 60,000 soldiers have been killed or disabled in military operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. And it's the families of these service men and women that Oklahoman Dan Rooney and the Folds of Honor Foundation hope to help. Each Memorial Day, top golfers from around the nation come to Owasso, Oklahoma to take part in what's called the Patriot Cup. Pro golfers paired with celebrities and military personnel play not for prize money, but to raise scholarships and other assistance to give back to the spouses and children of soldiers killed or disabled in service to our country. The event is the brainchild of former F-16 fighter pilot and PGA golf professional, Major Dan Rooney, who's the founder of the Folds of Honor Foundation and the creator of Patriot Golf Day. And it is all up to us uh, to, to honor their sacrifice, uh, to inspire, but more importantly, empower these families with an opportunity of an education. Well, since its founding in 2007, the Patriot Golf Day has grown to include over 3,000 courses around the U.S., as well as Patriot Bowling Days and Patriot Marina Days on July 4th, all to raise scholarship money for families of veterans 
like John Jones. My name is Amber Jones. I am a current student at Colorado State University and I am a recipient of a Folds of Honor scholarship. This is my first semester back after eight years and my concentration for school is global tourism. My name is John Jones. I lived and grew up in Oklahoma. I, after I graduated um, out of Edmond Memorial High School, I decided to go into the Marine Corps. I was stationed in uh, Al Qaim, Iraq. Uh, it's in the Al Anbar province, right where the Euphrates River meets up to Syria. Wild, wild west is what we called it. Primarily, we were doing hard hits. Um, we were looking for HVTs, high value targets in the area. I think it was 9.20, 9.15, 9.20 in the morning, 20 minutes after I left the wire, got hit um, with a double stack anti-tank mine. I went through the roof of my thin skin Humvee and then uh, went 25 feet in the air and landed behind my Humvee. I got medevac back to al -Qaim. and then from there I went to Balad. And then from Balad, Longstuhl, Germany, Longstuhl to Bethesda. So I underwent surgeries in Alkheim, Longstuhl, and Bethesda. It was every 24 hours, pretty much. After he had his initial 32 surgeries, the result eventually uh, was losing both legs below the knee. We decided to leave Maryland and head down to Texas, which was closer to my two stepchildren. Uh, we got married two days prior to heading down to Texas in the hospital with a bunch of nurses and doctors. I became a stepmom at that point and of course a wife to a disabled veteran and that's where I took the back the back step. I was the last on the priority list of what needed to be done and taken care of and all of a sudden school and working and all of those things that I had a lot of drive for and ambition and whatnot just didn't matter as much anymore. It was about making sure John got his life back together and he was able to start walking again. Every single morning I wake up to a husband without his legs. He has to get in his chair, he has to get in the shower, he has to use the restroom sitting, he has to do these things that he will have to do forever. She kicked me in the ass whenever I needed it and got me to where I needed to be and made me go to physical therapy. My son was born missing his right foot due to amniotic band syndrome, which is just a, a fluke thing that can happen to any woman. We found that out at five months pregnant um, and knew that we soon were going to have a son that too would need prosthetics and would face all the different challenges that John had. I mean, we had all the odds against us, let's just say that. And so, as long as we kept open communication, which was not easy, especially for a Marine, you've got to really teach them how to talk about their feelings. For the first five years, she sacrificed a ton of um, letting me figure out where I was going to be, figure out what I'm going to do for a career, and pushing me to go. Having like an organization like Poles of Honor just come in and be able to, you know, give this money to spouses that, you know, I think they sacrifice more than we do. Because, yeah, we go out and we fight the war, but they're back here every single day doing the bills, taking care of the kids, holding down this fort, which is probably more chaotic in more times than what we were through. She had the harder job. If you'd like to learn more about the Folds of Honor Foundation, we do have links to other stories, as well as more information on how you can get involved to help the families of those who serve. And that's all available at okhorizon.com. It's a new normal for Oklahoma's largest industry. Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, we look at how Oklahoma's energy industry is handling some significant challenges. The future of the industry is going to be headed forward in a manner where Oklahomans can all enjoy the benefit of job creation. Energy production and Oklahoma's economy on Oklahoma Show for the Heartland, Oklahoma Horizon. Well, there is an old saying in journalism that no story is worth dying for. An axiom Oklahoma war correspondent Mike Betcher says he could not disagree more with. 
While he recognizes the danger, he puts himself into it every time he travels into a combat zone. Betcher believes there's an even bigger danger to our democracy if he doesn't. With less than 1% of Americans now serving in active duty, Betcher believes it is his duty to show us as we sit comfortably at home on our couches just some of the sacrifices made by our nation's bravest sons and daughters. I'm Rob McClendon. Thanks for watching. See you back here next week. Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education and the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping good people grow good things. Thank you for watching Oklahoma Horizon.